As forensic professionals, ultimately, our task and our challenge is to make effective decisions that can potentially save lives. When we're thinking about cases such as stalking, domestic violence, or even with the rise of terrorism and loan act of violence now, nothing is more important than our decision making. And one of the areas that I think is crucial to discuss is the concept of leakage and what that means for our practice and also as threat assessment professionals making decisions about the potential likelihood of someone carrying out an act of violence. Leakage was first coined by Mary O'Toole in her study on school shootings. And really what it pertains to is the unintentional or intentional revealing of information, whether it be thoughts, feelings, or even attitudes or behaviour that might indicate an intention or a pending likelihood of acting in a violent manner. Now, in terms of looking at leakage specific to terrorism or loan act of violence, O'Toole has since refined that along with Malloy and really leakage is now around the idea of expressed intent to commit harm. So there's a global or broader definition where we can get bits or snippets of information that may be reflective of a pending desire or a pending intent to commit violence or we can have direct communicated intent to a third party where that reveals information about the person's intent to carry out the violence. Essentially what we're talking about is when, where, what acts, what target and ultimately what is the intent of the individual. So leakage fits into what we would describe as warning behaviours. So this could be things such as high risk indicators, pre-intent signals, telltale behaviours, red flag indicators, or what we'd also coin as accelerant patterns. So as forensic professionals, when we get information that may indicate potentially warning behaviours, what we're really talking about are acute risk indicators. So we're not saying that it's necessarily an indicator of more global risk, but in that moment, we've got information that may indicate that there's an increase or imminency in a person's risk. So alone this information isn't diagnostic, but it could indicate that there's been a fluctuation in the person's risk profile and that they may be on an accelerant rate or an accelerant pattern towards engaging in a form of violent behaviour. So we're talking about a change in their baseline behaviour. So some of the things that we might observe are changes in unconscious or conscious fantasies, shifting in emotional states, psychological preoccupation or fixation or grievance on a certain topic or even object or place. And when some of these factors also coincide with deterioration in mental health, then there can be cause for concern. So ultimately this leakage or warning type behaviour and information really is something that we need to consider and it needs to then guide our decision making about where we proceed to next with this individual. Now leakage can have broader application but it can also be one of many warning behaviours. And Malloy and colleagues have identified eight different warning behaviours that may indicate that someone is heading towards a trajectory of perpetrating violence. Now, the first warning behaviour is pathways. The person is in really a preparing and planning stage, as though they're thinking about the offence and potentially gathering tools, equipment, resources that may help them then carry out the attack. The second type is fixation, and essentially what we're talking about here is a person having a pathological fixation 
on either a person, a cause, or even something more global such as an organisation. Thirdly, we have identification, which really refers to the person starting to identify with violence and adopting this as part of their identity. It might be they start to have a warrior or even a commando mentality. We then have novel aggression, which for many offenders, it's not necessarily something that is easy to identify because there's often coinciding violence going on at the time. But novel aggression really talks about the idea of a randomized aggressive act and it can be out of context for that individual. But that can be a little challenging when we're working with offending populations because generally they can be prone to committing different types of criminal offences or violence. So when we're talking about novel aggression, we probably need that to be coinciding with some of the other warning behaviours for that to tell us something. We also have the idea of energy burst, and that's really that the person as they're getting closer to carrying out the offence, suddenly gets a burst of energy and excitement and they may then start to become more rapid in their planning but also in their engagement and more frantic as well. Then of course we have leakage which, as discussed before, is really the idea of information being expressed to a third party around the intent to carry out violence. We have the idea of last resort behaviour or essentially last resort thinking and really what this is, is the individual believing that violence is the only way to resolve the problem. Essentially it's the only solution that they have left. And lastly we have a directly communicated threat and that might often be signalling that there's a potential likelihood of carrying out violence, making a direct threat which may be at someone specifically or maybe more broad and more global but it's again it's expressing that there's an underlying pathology evident and there's an underlying intention for that person to carry out the violence. So a direct threat may not always be indicative of the person going to carry out that exact threat but it's reflective of an underlying intent that's simmering and emerging for that individual. So the warning behaviours towards pending violence are really valuable tools to understand and as practitioners we need to have an awareness of how these acute changes and acute fluctuations in risk may present in an individual. And we can look at it as warning behaviours, but we can also look at it as we are going to get snippets or leakage pieces of information through our engagement with whether it's clients, whether it's through assessment, or even whether it's law enforcement working with offenders. This information will come in, and our job is to make sense of that and understanding that these snippets of information provide valuable clues and insights into where a person is currently at is really something that's at the forefront of forensic practice.